Welcome to this series on neural network programming with PyTorch. In this episode, we will see how we can use our convolutional neural network to generate an output prediction tensor from a sample input of our data set. Without further ado, let's get started. At this point in the series, we've finished building our model, and technically, we could jump right into the training process from here. However, let's work to better understand how our network is working right out of the box. And then, once we understand our network a little more deeply, we'll be better prepared to understand the training process. The first step is to understand forward propagation. Forward propagation is the process of transforming an input tensor to an output tensor. At its core, a neural network is a function that maps an input tensor to an output tensor. And forward propagation is just a special name for the process of passing an input tensor to the network and receiving the output from the network. As we've seen, neural networks operate on data in the form of tensors. The word forward propagate is used to indicate that the input tensor data is transmitted through the network in the forward direction. For our network, what this means is simply passing our input tensor to the network and then receiving the output tensor. To do this, we pass our sample data to the network's forward method. This is why the forward method has the name forward. The execution of the forward method is the process of forward propagation. If you're following the series, we know by now that we don't call the forward method directly. Rather, we call the network instance instead. Make sure to see the episode on callable PyTorch neural networks for more details on this. Let's discuss the word propagate. The word propagate means to move or transmit through some medium. In the case of neural networks, data propagates through the layers of the network. There is a notion of backward propagation, or backprop as well, which makes the term forward propagation suitable as a first step. During the training process, backpropagation occurs after forward propagation. Forward propagation is the process of passing an input image tensor to the forward method that we implemented in the last episode. The output we receive from the forward method is the network's prediction. In the episode on data sets and data loaders, we saw how to access a single sample image tensor from our training set, and more importantly, how to access a batch of image tensors from our data loader. Now that we have our network defined and our forward method implemented, we're ready to pass an image to our network to get a prediction. Let's get our code set up. We need our imports, our training set, and our network. Alright, 
Before we begin, we are going to turn off PyTorch's gradient calculation feature. This will stop PyTorch from building a computation graph as our tensor flows through the network. The computation graph keeps track of the network's mapping by tracking each computation that happens as the tensor propagates forward through the network. The graph is then used during the training process to calculate the derivative, also known as the gradient, of the loss function. Since we aren't training the network yet, we aren't planning on updating the weights, and so we don't require gradient calculations. We'll turn this back on when training begins. This process of tracking calculations happens in real time, right as the calculations occur. Remember back at the beginning of the PyTorch series, we said that PyTorch uses a dynamic computational graph. Well, now we're turning this feature off. Turning it off isn't strictly necessary, but having the feature turned off does reduce memory consumption since the graph isn't stored in memory. This code turns the feature off. Let's continue by creating an instance of our network class. Next, we'll produce a single sample from our training set, unpack the image and the label, and verify the image's shape. The image tensor has a shape that indicates that we have a single color channel image that is 28 in height and 28 in width. Cool, this is what we expect. Now, there's a second step we must perform before simply passing this tensor to our network. When we pass a tensor to our network, the network is expecting a batch. So even if we wanna pass a single image, we still need a batch. This is no problem. We can create a batch that contains a single image. All of this will be packaged into a single four-dimensional tensor that reflects the following dimensions. Batch size, input channels, height, and width. This requirement of the network arises from the fact that the four methods in the PyTorch neural network module convolutional layer classes expect their tensors to have four dimensions. This is pretty standard as most neural network implementations do deal with batches of images rather than single samples. To put our single sample image tensor into a batch with a size of one, we just need to unsqueeze the tensor to add an additional dimension. We saw how to do this in previous episodes. Using this, we can now pass the unsqueezed image to our network and get the network's prediction. Runtime error. Size mismatch detected. A rank 1 tensor with 120 elements was passed but 12 input features were expected. There appears to be a bug in this code. Let's find it. The problem appears to be with the second linear layer, FC2. Look. The in underscore features parameter value says 12. This should be 120. Let's change it. There. The code has been corrected, and all bugs have been eliminated. Bugs are no match for a lizard. Especially. Deep lizard. And we did it. We've used our for method to get a prediction from the network. The network has returned a prediction tensor that contains a prediction value for each of the 10 categories of clothing. The shape of the prediction tensor is one by 10. This tells us that the first axis has a length of one while the second axis has a length of 10. The interpretation of this is that we have one image in our batch and 10 prediction classes for that image. For each input in the batch and for each prediction class, we have a prediction value. If we wanted these values to be probabilities, we could just use the softmax function from the nn.functional package. The label for the first image in our training set is nine. And using the argmax function, 
we can see that the highest value in our prediction tensor occurred at the class represented by index two. So the network predicted a pullover and the actual value is an ankle boot. Remember, each prediction class is represented by a corresponding index. The prediction in this case is incorrect which is what we really expect because the weights in the network were generated randomly. There are a couple of important things we need to point out about these results. Most of the probabilities came in close to 10%, and this makes sense because our network is guessing, and we have 10 prediction classes coming from a balanced data set. In other words, if we guess randomly, we would guess accurately at about a 10% rate. Another implication of the randomly generated weights is that each time we create a new instance of our network, the weights within the network will be different. This means that the predictions we get if we create two different networks will not be the same. Keep this in mind because your predictions will be different from what we see here. Don't forget about the blog post for this video on deeplizard.com, and if you haven't already, check out the Deep Lizard Hive Mind. It is cool. It has code and stuff. You are already supporting collective intelligence by watching this video. However, if you want to do more to support Deep Lizard and the collective, smash the like button on this video for sure. From my calculations, Deep Lizard videos need to achieve a 10% like ratio to reach escape velocity. Thanks again, and we'll see ya in the next one.